Wargamers don't all agree on much, or anything really, but one thing that is absolutely true is that everybody loves the orcs. Oh, what's this? An old pewter retro orc? Don't mind if I do. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. The orcs are the other really magical thing that Games Workshop created, probably the second most popular thing after Space Marines. The point of Warhammer is to collect an army and make it your own. You collect Space Marines, but if you paint them red, they're gonna have a totally different attitude to your friend Brenda's blue Space Marines. It all comes down to how strong the lore is, and I think lightning struck twice. I think once with Space Marines, and once with the orcs. The orcs also have a large number of cultures that make up their waz, the vehicle-loving evil suns, the affluent bad moons, the violent goths, the primitive snake bites, and the piratical free buddhas, to name a few. These cultures have wildly different feelings depending on what colors you paint them and what bits you decide to glue on. And I think this is true not just for the lore, but also for the look of the models. Old orc models look dramatically different than the new models, but I think they still kind of work together. I have this old retro model and a shelf full of modern 40k orcs, and I bet when I'm through with this guy, no one would know the difference. This model is an orc runth herder, but it's not a normal runth herder. I bought this model for $15 from a seller from Indiana on eBay, but a few days after that, another identical listing popped up from New York selling this same model in same condition for $75. And the reason for the huge disparity in price is that this is actually a very weird figure. This model is in a blister that is unpunched, which means it was never hanging in a store, and it's not labeled. I don't know if this is a misprint and it was never sold for that reason or what was going on. And to add even more weirdness, on the back it says made in the USA, which almost makes sense because there was a US branch of Citadel for a little while, but that ended in like 1984. So long before this model came out and this model is marked 1999. This model asks a lot of questions and answers none of them. But I have a theory, and its name is Zod Rog Wartsnaga. Yes, that weird scraggly haired orc HQ that Games Workshop came out with a while ago, that was not the first time that name appeared in the history of 40k. This was the original Zog Rod Wartsnaga model, pretty cool, but this was the original artwork for the character, and they look nothing alike. But then take a look at this model, and it is the spitting image of the artwork. The pointy ears, the long face, the rock and roll hair, the fur lined clothing, that weird uh, stick. I think what happened is that this model is the real Zod Grod Wartsnaga, but Games Workshop decided it wasn't fancy enough, and so they decided to make a more awesomer model. And this model, because it was fine, it's perfectly all right, they decided to sell it as just a normal run third. That is pure speculation on my part, but look at this guy compared to the artwork. It has to be true. I bet that with enough work and enough paint, I can get this model to look identical to a brand spanking new modern Games Workshop orc. I took this bad boy and used some nippers to clip the slots into two pegs. These will let me stab them into the base and give a really strong connection, which is important for big heavy models like this. Now I want to add a little height to the base as this guy is a little small for an orc, so I glued down a piece of pine bark to the base with super glue and then mixed up some milliput, a two-part epoxy, and squished it all over the base. Now this orc sits a proper height for a boy his age. Once the milliput was dry, I gave it a coat of wood glue, then sprinkled on some coarse sand and fine grain sand. Orcs from this era came with arms and weapon sprues made of plastic, so I picked an appropriate arm and glued it in place with super glue. These old orc guns came with handles attached, although you'll never need it, so I clipped it off and then glued it to his fist with plastic glue. I've struggled in the past to actually get modern paint jobs on retro models. There seems to be something about these things that just forces a retro paint job. On this Vindicar assassin with cheeks of steel, the paint just worked itself into a retro comic book style. And on this Gene Stealer cult Magus, something about that face just looks like it's staring at me from the cover of a 1990s White Dwarf. I will get this old model to look new. Not 1999 new, 2022 new. 
I prime this mini in gray. But Jay, you always prime black. What's changed? Well, it's all about lighting. Black Prime and or Zenithal makes for a high contrast model that feels like it's in a dark environment, like these Tau stealth suits sneaking through a dark jungle. But on these Black Templar scouts who have a white prime, they're standing loud and proud in the bright sunlight. And that's what I want for my orcs. To start off my painting, I had to get my base coats out of the way, so I put some black contrast all over his clothing. Then I put white contrast over his sleeves, puffy fur, and his rockstar hair. Then I put brown over his leather belt, orky satchel, and grot snatch and staff. Then I loaded up my palette with some black, tan, and white. I mixed up a gray paint and used this to highlight his black clothing. Contrast paint does a pretty good job on its own, but a little extra highlighting makes it look really good. I mixed up a light brown and highlighted all of his brown bits. This was a normal base coat, so I had to do a few more highlight coats than I did over the contrast paint. Then I took some white paint and highlighted his sleeves and hair. Now he's based and highlighted and the model was already looking like a straight up snack. I broke out the metallic paints. I really like these Vallejo airbrush metallics, but they're way too watery for regular brushing. So I mixed a little gloss medium to make it thicker and stickier and I put this over all his weapons. It's now time to paint some orc flesh, and the way I do orc flesh is, I get out all of my green paints, and then I randomly select two. The reason I do this is because I want every single orc in my army to have a very slightly different look to their flesh, so that there's a little bit of variety and make them all look a little bit more natural, like living beings. So, I am going to pick, do do do, this one, and, this one. Oh boy. Uh, the gods Gork and Mork have selected for me neon green and lime green. Classic rogue trader retro bright orcs, which is not what I want to do. But you know what? Those are the rules and I'm going to stick to them. These colors don't exactly remind me of a grim, dark, modern orc warrior. I put these colors on the palette and mixed in the browns and blacks I had from the clothing. And this turned those bright saturated colors into the grim orc complexion I was after. I base coated the orc with my mid-tone, washed it with my brownish greenish dark tone, then I began highlighting with a lighter shade of green. The skin was a little too brown, so I put a green wash over everything. Then I reapplied my highlights. Then I mixed tan into my green to make lighter and lighter desaturated green tones to pick out all the details with. Then I dotted the eyes with a bright red. And you know what else could use a dot of red? That's right, our Patreon. Over there, we have lots of cool STLs, both miniature and terrain, ready to populate your wargaming tables. If you sign up, there's a welcome pack that includes Dawn of War Space Marine, Imperial Guard, and Eldar Terrain, all hosted by comics, games, and things. We also make Patreon-exclusive videos where we critique viewer models and weekly Discord hangouts. We also have merch, link in the description. On my orcs, I like to add little fleshy patches around the lips, ears, and hands. To me, this makes them look more alive and natural, like they're real organisms. I'm almost done, and it looks like a retro model. I think I'm about halfway between a retro model and a modern model, but I'm gonna see if I can muscle it further into the modern model territory with some washes and pigments. I put a black wash over the weapons and any spots of his clothing that I felt were looking a little too bright. Then I dry brush silver over the metal. Then came the pigments. I prepared a slurry of orange and red. Then I put this over his weapons. I globbed it on pretty thick and then pulled it away from spots that were getting too much coverage. Once the pigments were dry, I dry brushed on some silver right on top. Then on the base, I coated it in a wet layer of tan and then used a big old brush to squish some yellow pigments into all the nooks and crannies of the base. And finished. What's funny is that this runth herd, one of the lowest ranking members of the orcs, is probably the best painted model in my orc collection. But you know, adding one runth herd really isn't much in the grand scheme of an orc army. Really, I should paint up a bunch of Gretchen. The only problem is, I don't have a bunch of Gretchen. Now I do. I prepared once again to build some models. I find usually it takes me just as much time to build models as it does to paint them. I am a slow builder and I always fix every mold line and imperfection on the model. After that, it was time to paint. Just like the orcs, I gave these guys a light gray prime. Gretchen, Grotz, and Snotlings are models that Games Workshop has always had a lot of fun with. The orcs aren't the grimmest and darkest of armies, and the Gretchen are even more lighthearted. Gretchen were some of the first plastic models for 40k, entering the scene as single piece lumps of plastic, but there have been dozens of old pewter Gretchen over the years. The first wave of Rogue Trader Gretchen are awesome. I think these guys would fit right in with today's little gabos. Let me introduce you to some of my favorite 40k goblins from the old days. Introducing Fat Grot Carrying a Box. Next up, a Grot Pooping in a Helmet. 
a banner-waving Grot carrying a normal Earth AK-47, a Gretchen firing a few autogun rounds into the air like you just don't care, a Grot who has captured the flag, a cool guy Grot who is selling squigs, a Grot who's holding the map, and last but not least, who could forget? This. The Grots of 40k are really fun. Although pitiful in game and barely worth setting up on the battlefield for how quickly they are removed, they are beloved by orc players. And boom! 80 more points added to the collection. My orc army is coming along nicely. I have a good amount of boys, far too many bikes, and a lot more unpainted, and a smattering of everything else. Now let me introduce you to the real Zodgrod Wartsnaga. This is the best painted orc in my collection. I'm gonna have to really pull out the stops for my HQs because this runt farmer can't be outshining my bosses. I think I pulled off a modern look on a retro model. Sure, he's physically an old model, but mixed in with the rest, I think it's pretty hard to pick him out of the rest of the rabble. He has a wonderfully expressive face, the retro gun actually looks pretty decent, and if you look close, in his bag he has some snacks for later in the form of a snotling and a squig. Them's good eatin'. He will lead these 10 little gabos proudly into battle against the most powerful enemies in the galaxy. Or more likely guard some mech guns at the back lines. But still, a job, and somebody's gotta do it. My orc army is kinda my pride and joy. Every model is kit-bashed and unique. And you know what? A 20-year-old runth herd is the perfect addition. Maybe I need to pick up some 20-year-old Gretchen to go along, to add to his herd. I'm definitely gonna be keeping my eyes out for some more old orc models, and if you know of any really cool old orc models that I should take a look at, please leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.